Hello, my name is Carlos Sevilla and my team members are Carlos Lopez and Luis Olvera. Today we are going to talk about SQL injection attack. Clients use the browser to make requests to internet servers. Servers use web applications to authenticate users. After a user inputs its authentication information, the server sends, sends it to the database and if this one is correct, the user can proceed. SQL is a query language that was designed to manage data stored in relational databases. You can use it to access, modify, and delete data. Many websites use SQL systems to manage their databases. Here we have some examples of a basic uh, SQL queries. The select query is uh, used to get records from the database. Another common ones are the update and insert or delete. To perform SQL injection attacks, the attacker must find vulnerable points within the web page or web application. A web application has vulnerabilities when users, users when the user can input directly into the SQL query. Query. Let's take a look. Let's take a look closer to the code of this page. The user is going to type. Any username, I mean, it's uh, his username and his password. Then it's gonna be grabbed here in the code. It's gonna be sent to the SQL query, and it's gonna be sent to the database. So the user can actually input directly into the SQL query, which is a very bad practice. If the Alice information is correctly typed in the username and password fields, the database is going to return the Alice profile. But can we make can we make it return any record without knowing any login information? Well the answer is yes because the implementation is very wrong. The, the implementation used in this um, PHP file, it's very wrong. Let's take a look of, to this statement. Um, select everything from credential where ID is equal input and password is equal PWD. This is the query query used to access information in the database. In SQL language, the, the num number sign is used to comment lines. After typing the number sign symbol, anything after the symbol in that line will become a comment. If, for example, the, the attacker typed, types A and then close the quotation mark and types the number signed, it can comment the password requirement but it still won't access to the database because the usernames will probably don't match any of the records of the database. But this can be solved by including an always true condition. So we can type anything, close the quotation mark, then I meant include first the always true condition, one equal one, close the quotation mark, and comment everything else, including the password requirement. This way, this way the attacker is uh, it's injecting an uh, the string and a, a string that is going to become part of the code. The database is going to return the first record, which is in this case the Alice profile. We can, the attacker can even log uh, logging at the administrator if he knows the admin username, the administrator username. For example, let's say in this case it's admin. The attacker will just need to uh, type the admin, close the quotation mark, comment everything else. Attackers don't even need to make the SQL injection attack from the login page. They can send an HTTP request from a terminal with a proper encoded string, HTML encoded string. The CURL command is used for this purpose. In this example, 
the percent signed on the 27 is going to be translated to the quotation mark and the percent sign and the 23 is going to be translated to the number sign. This is going to have the same effect that the case we saw before and the database is going to return the same information. You could think that we can even append, attackers can even append another SQL statement um, separated by the semicolon. But this is not true. PHP doesn't allow multiple SQL statements in the same query. Type in semicolon and delete along with the previous uh, statement is going to return an error, which is a very bad practice also because hackers can um, have information from the return error. So it's better to just return uh, any message, which is not about the database. If the attacker can already log in, he can go to any uh, prof uh, deep profile page and make even more uh, damage. Because these uh, pages use the update statement to modify information, important information. The attacker have, if the attacker has access to this, he or she can um, not just view the database but actually make uh, alterations. The update statement set different fields in a record. Like for example the salary of an employee or the password of the account. With the same approach than before, with the same approach than before the attacker can for example change the salary of any um, record given the condition and we, in the in the first example for ex, uh, we have the Alice we want to change the the salary of Alice and we set the condition to Alice's name the attacker can even change the salary of the administrator by set, setting the condition name equal admin or even the password. After typing any of these lines in the first field, the nickname is gonna be Ali, for example, the first one. We're gonna close the quotation mark, then we are going to set salary to well, a lot of money, and then uh, the condition where which record we want to change, and then comment everything else. Here we have the result of these three statements in the database. Alice's salary is changed, the administrator's salary is set to 1, and his, his password is hacked. The best way to avoid a SQL injection attack is using prepared statements. The fundamental concept is to separate code from data. Attackers use input data to inject their own piece of code into the PHP file. So separate these two sections is a good practice. Prepare, statement, prepare statements perform this by compiling the code first and then by, the, by binding the la later the data. So the process is divided into these two steps. First step, sending the code, compile the code in the database and then sending the data, the actual data which is going to be bind to the compiled code. For this by binding um, process, the bind param function is uh, used. Conclusions. The fundamental cause of SQL injection attack is mixing code and data. Hackers can take advantage of this bad practice by injecting their own code through the data. Hackers succeed on Bypassing the bypass, bypassing the security measures um, if they uh, are allowed to do that they can alter the later view any record of the data the only secure way to prevent this is by uh, including prepared statements thank you very much this is all